Last week on Rally, the 1958 Alifa Bodegay Pele rookie card PSA 9 increased its market cap by 33%, pushing the asset over $500,000. This week, we are highlighting the 1981 Topps Joe Montana PSA 10, which is one of the most difficult football cards to score a PSA gem main grade on. Welcome back, everyone, to the Slab Sox Rally Report, sponsored by Rally. Rally is a platform that allows users to buy and sell shares of hundreds of collectible assets. If you missed our intro video from a couple weeks ago, be sure to check it out to hear how Rally works. This message is sponsored by Rally. RSC Archive LLC may be referred to individually as a Rally entity. Rally is not a broker-dealer, and securities are offered to investors via registered broker-dealers and members of FINRA and SIPC. Any private security investments contain a high degree of risk, and we urge you to review full details and disclaimers at rallyrd.com disclaimer. If you lived in Canada in the late 1970s and had 20 cents in your pocket, you would have had a shot to pull a to-be-someday $1 million Wayne Gretzky rookie card. That's the amount it would have cost you for one pack of OPG hockey cards in 1979. Now, the amount of people that took advantage of that is another story. According to the 1979 OPG Collector's Guide by Hockey Media, the price per pack of OPC increased 5 Canadian cents from the previous year, a 33% increase. The total cost of a box went from $7.20 to $9.60. Accounting for inflation, that would mean these boxes would have had a retail value of $31.71 if put into stores today, which just seems crazy. If you aren't familiar with the 1979 Wayne Gretzky rookie card, you might mistake a Topps rookie card for an OPC rookie card. The OPC card was distributed in Canada while the Topps cards were distributed in the United States. The design is identical, the photograph is the exact same, but there are three slight differences. The first difference is on the back of the card, the copyright says OPC. The second difference is there's some French on the back of the OPC card, and the third difference is the way these cards were cut. The OPC cards were cut with wires and have natural rough edges, while the Topps cards were cut with a blade and have natural straight edges. As for which one is more desired, the OPC PSA 10 sold for $3.75 million in late May, shortly after a Topps PSA 10 sold for $1.05 million. Both of these cards are PSA population of two extremely rare cards. As for the actual OPC box, there are 48 packs per box, which yields a total of 672 cards. In the full OPC set, there are 396 total cards, so there is a chance two Gretzky's can come out of the same box. This particular box and rally is certified by BBCE and contains at least one visible Gretzky rookie card. This box was initially offered in February of this year for $30 per share, 10,000 shares available, which is a $300,000 initial market cap. Since the initial offering, there's been only one trading window on June 25th when shares dropped to $20 per share, which is a 33% decrease. The next trading window is this week on Thursday, October 14th. Long before we entered the golden age of quarterbacks, before you had guys like Brady, Manning, and Favre breaking every record in the book, we had Joe Montana. Montana was the poster child for what winning looked like in the 1980s. He ended up with two MVP awards, three Super Bowl MVPs, and four Super Bowl wins. While he might not have had as good of stats as Dan Marino, he did something that Dan Marino couldn't do in his career, win the big game. At the time of his retirement, Montana was tied with Terry Bradshaw for the most Super Bowl victories by a QB. This record has been passed by only the great Tom Brady, who sits with an incredible seven rings. While many of his stats have been beaten by this Pat's happy generation we're in right now, Rodgers, Matt Ryan, all those guys, when you look at Montana's stats in context with his generation, along with his Super Bowl victories, you're looking at one of the greatest QBs to ever play the game. One of the greatest QBs of all time also happens to have one of the most iconic football cards of all time with his 1981 Topps rookie. While there is no shortage of Montana Topps rookies available, getting a gem mint PSA 10 grade on one is like finding a needle in a haystack. There are 108 PSA 10s in existence, but over 20,000 have been graded. That equates to just 0.5% of all copies graded receiving the 10. The Montana Tops PSA 10 had an initial offering in March of this year at $7 per share, 10,000 shares offered, and a $70,000 market cap. This Montana hasn't had a trading window to date, but its first window is coming up on Friday, October 15th. 
When thinking about the most popular high school basketball players ever, a few names come to mind. LeBron James, John Wall, and Andrew Wiggins are way up there, but no one sparked a social media craze quite like Zion Williamson. The 6'8 freak of nature was breaking YouTube with his highlight reel dunks, gaining millions of views across multiple platforms, and his decision to commit to Duke felt like a replay of LeBron's famous The Decision Special, where he announced he was leaving Cleveland to join Wade and Bosch in Miami to try to win multiple rings. Zion Williamson's high school career is such an integral part of his story, and so are the shoes that led to his highlight reel dunks. Up for train this week on Rally is a pair of Zion Williamson game-used Adidas James Harden Volume 1 shoes from his high school days at Spartanburg Day School. There have not been many game-worn shoes of Zion to sell, and ones from his high school days mark one of the earliest examples in the market. These shoes were initially offered for $30 per share, 500 shares available, and a $15,000 initial market cap. This asset has had multiple trading windows with two in 2020 and three in 2021. From the initial offering of $30 per share, it increased 90% as on October 6, 2020, share prices rose to $57, equaling a $28,500 market cap. So far in 2021, share prices have remained relatively stable, with the most recent window closing on June 28th at $58.15 per share for a market cap of $29,075. These shoes will be back up for trading on Wednesday, October 13th. Larry Legend, the Rookie of the Year, back-to-back-to-back MVP award winner and three-time NBA champion, is a man that needs no introduction. Everyone and their mom knows about the historic bouts between Larry Bird and Magic Johnson. What they might not know is the significance of his 1981 Topps card. While it's not his rookie card, that's his 1980 Topps card. The 1981 is his first solo card. The 1980 Topps set featured triple panel cards where each individual player had a mini card that took one third of the entire card. While these 1980 rookie cards are sought after, Larry has to share the limelight with a number of well-known players including Magic Johnson, his nemesis, and Julia Servin. The 1981 card, on the other hand, is him by himself, which makes it, it one of the more sought-after second-issue cards of all time. While the 1981 Tops is special, a PSA 10 of this card is even more special, considering there are only 61 PSA 10s out of 4,888 total graded. The Rally 1981 Topps PSA 10 Larry Bird had an initial offering in August of 2021. It had an I.O. price of $6 per share, 5,000 shares offered, and a $30,000 market cap. There have been no trading windows to date, but the first one is coming up on Tuesday, October 12th. Between all four of these assets, the word I describe all of them as is rare. We've got some game-worn Zion High School shoes, PSA 10s with minuscule gem rates in a sealed box that used to retail for less than $10, but is now worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. Thank you everyone for tuning in to another Slab Stocks Rally Report, and we will see you all in the next one.